In this video, we're going to make the wheel. So I'm going to start on the XZ plane, and then I'm also going to tip it. So if you put your cursor by uh, the cube in the corner, the little gray cube, see where it says top? We're going to tip it so top is upright. So that means our front is nice and flat. Okay? So top, you want to read it, not sideways. And the first thing I'm going to do is put in a rectangle. Okay, so first I'm going to just put in the rectangle. And I'm going to make this dimension right here, so the height. And if I'm looking at my drawing, I can see that that should be a quarter inch. So 1.25. Alright, so that made that quite small, so we can zoom if, in if we need to, but I'll do that in a second. Because I'm going to place in this next dimension that if I look at my graph again, let's see, we have one inch, so one. All right, and now I'm gonna zoom in using the home key on the keyboard. So after that, I'm gonna put in a, another rectangle, and I'm gonna dimension this one after. I'm gonna dimension from this green edge to here and down and looking here, we can see our smallest dimension right there is a quarter inch, so 0 0.25. And from this green edge over to the same edge we clicked on before, that is 0 0.75. Alright, so it's not fully constrained. We can still see this green line. So I'm going to do is click on the bottom edge and then click on the green line and move it over. And you can see right here it is 0 0.2, sorry, uh, 0 0.125. All right, I'm going to change two of these lines to different line types. So I'm going to get out of the dimension tool. So I'm going to click on this line that we have on the origin and click on our center line tool because our wheel is going to revolve around this edge. So that is this point right here. I know it has a hole cut in it. We'll do that later. This line on the opposite side, I'm going to turn into a construction line. The reason for this is when we revolve, I want it to be ignored because we still need this rounded edge. So what I'm going to do here is use my arc tool. I'm going to make sure I'm at center point arc. I'm going to make sure we have this green dot in the center for the center point because I want it perfectly in line. I'm clicking on this green dot over here. Moving it all the way over until I get the other green dot. I'm going to right click, click OK. So I'm just going to try to move these two. Sometimes they have a little issue where they don't quite connect and they look like they're good. If they don't connect, uh, you can either use the extend tool or the trim tool to fix it in, or you can just zoom in real far and see if they line up. So I'm going to finish my sketch and revolve. And right now you can see that there's two different shapes. So Inventor is confused on which one we want. We want this one and not this part. And because it has a little confusion, we need to tell it to revolve around there. And then click OK. Our next step is to add in our fillets and rounds. So I'm going to click on the fillet tool. And I'm going to click on these four. So make sure you get all four. So both sides of this part, both sides of that part. And our starting dimension is not the one we want. Instead, if we look here, we want 0, 0.0, don't forget that other 0, 63. So again, that is 0, 0.063. And then click OK. So it's starting to look a little bit closer. So now we can put that hole in the center. So we're going to create a sketch on this front portion and put in a point, just like we did with the stack. And then we can use the hole tool. So to see what's actually going on, I like to tilt mine. Is it necessary for this? Not really, but I like to do that. Uh, make sure it's simple hole. For the seat, none. For termination, we want through all. And the direction, it's going in the right direction. So this dimension is actually on this drawing right here. So we can see that it is 0 
two eight in diameter. And then we can click on OK. So now I'm going to go down to the next set. So what I'm going to do is flip this to the back and we're going to have a sketch. What I'm now going to do is put in my first circle and my first circle is going to have a radius of 0 0.73 but since I'm putting it in as a diameter I need to do times 2. So if your circle is smaller than mine you need to remember to go back in times 2. Okay, So I'm putting another circle this time it's going to be a lot larger so the radius for this one is 0 0.63 and again because they're typing in the radius and not the diameter times 2. Okay so I have both of these in there. I'm going to just move the numbers out of the way. What I can do now is put in a line just right here. The length of it doesn't really matter. I'm just using that to dimension off of in a second. So I'm going to use the line tool again, place another one, and I'm going to place in one more. Okay, now I'm going to use my dimension tool. From green line to green line, both of those, okay, it's going to be 30 let me move the cursor over to the number so you can see it. <laughs> 30 degrees. All right, and then from this green line right here, the lower of the two, to that original line that I put in, that is going to be 15 degrees. All right, now that I have everything in, I'm going to use my trim tool to trim up some extra. So I'm trimming these lines. All right, and then I'm going to finish sketch. I'm going to see if this will work the way I hope it does. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So, nope, it's grabbing too much. So I'm going to cancel. I'm going to go back to my sketch. I'm going to take this line and turn it into a construction line. So then it'll ignore this piece and this piece. So I'm going to finish sketch, extrude. Nope, still having a little bit of an issue. So I'm going back into my sketch and I'm going to trim up a little bit more. So I'm going to trim off that piece. So you'd see how this right now is green. What I'm going to do just to make sure I can lock this in place so it doesn't move is add a few more dimensions in. Uh, this dimension, is it important to know the number? No, just as long as you didn't move anything after you uh, deleted that one line or trim in this case. So let's see if it works this time. Extrude. Oh, still have a little issue. You can see how it's connecting like that. That's how I know I, what I need to trim still. Okay, so trim, trim, trim. And eh, just for good measure, I'm going to trim this and make sure I have a dimension there. And again, that dimension, not important. I'm just doing that so it's locked in place. And I made sure I didn't move the green line while it was green. So finish, extrude. Oh, now it's working nicely. So I want my distance to be all, and you can see it's on cut. If yours happens to still be join, make sure you change it to cut. And then click OK. So right now we have just one of these little cutouts placed in, but we need to have six. So while it's at this angle, if it's flat like this, you're going to have a really hard time doing this. So make sure it's at an angle. You're going to use the circular pattern tool. You're going to click on the feature that you want to revolve, which is the little window cutout that we just did. We're going to click on the red arrow next to rotation axis, and we're going to click on the center. So it happens that 6 happens to be the default for this program, and that's exactly what we want. So we're just going to click OK. So instead of having to draw every single one of these in, we can just do it automatically with our lovely circular pattern tool. Makes life a little bit easier. So we're going to flip this around to our front, do our last little bit, which is this piece right here where the linkage arm and linkage peg connect to. 
So we're going to start a sketch. And when you're making the sketch, make sure it is on this surface that I've highlighted right here. Because if you do it on a different level, you're going to have an issue where this little kind of peg looking thing is not going to be at the right height and not connecting in the right spot. So I'm now, actually I'm going to show you another tool. Uh, if you right click just on the gray area outside your part and click on slice graphic, this is what it should look like. And this is actually going to make it a lot easier because, see, it's a little hard to see here, but the little peg-ish part here sticks through this outside edge. And when I show you what dimension to put, it kind of goes into there and then we can't see what we're doing. So I'm going to place in a circle. I'm going to place it off to the side. I know you're thinking it's horribly in the wrong spot and I'm doing that on purpose. <laughs> I will show you why in a second. So if we go to our center and this edge, so our center and center, we want the distance between the two of those. That's what I have circled there because we used all the other ones on this image. So that is 0 0.7. Okay, and I want this to be lined up right on this line. So what I'm going to do is just put in a dimension of zero. Okay, so let's just make sure it's right on that line. And our diameter, let's see, our diameter is right here. So it is a diameter of 0 0.25. All right, so that is our first little chunk of this. So we now need to finish and extrude. So the dimension we want to extrude this to is definitely not one inch. We want to extrude that to right here, a quarter of an inch. So 0 0.1, sorry, 0 0.25. And now we're going to create a sketch on that new surface we created. We're going to use project geometry. And we're going to use circle tool directly on the circle that we just had. And the dimension for that is right here. So that is 0 0.125. And again, finish sketch, extrude, and we want the small circle. And we want this one to be extruded. Let's see, oh, right there. 0 0.125. And now we want to create another sketch on the new surface. We want to project geometry. Put a point directly in the center, finish sketch, use the hole tool, and you can see how all this is taking out way too much. Uh, what we want is, let's see, simple hole, seat none, termination this time, the direction we want to be cut in, we want a flat bottom to this one, um, actually this time it doesn't really matter which one you choose, uh, I'm just going to use the one that I had before. And the dimensions for this, for our depth, for how far it goes in, remember this is the depth symbol, it is going to be a quarter inch. And then for our diameter, it's going to be right here, so 0 0.0625. So again, that is 0 0.0625. If you leave off that zero, it's going to be way too big. So if you realize it's going to remove a lot more, you forgot the zero. So now we're going to click OK. We're going to take a look at our part. So that is our finished wheel.